Hello and welcome back guys and girls to another Dead by Daylight killer tutorial. Today we're going to do a guide on a recently reworked killer and this killer is the clown. When I say recently released, I mean recently released as in two days ago, so plenty of time has been utilised in both the PTB and the live servers, so let's take a look at the new and improved clown. So the clown, on paper he has the potential to be a top killer in the right hands however he also has a few things going against him so i personally wouldn't place him near the top of the killers list but he certainly has the ability to destroy survivors with his ability to cut chases quickly as always we'll be looking at his teachables and he has got some very good teachables his add-ons powers how to utilize him best but firstly let's take a look at his basic stats the clown is from the curtain calls chapter and this was chapter 8 and was released in the game in June 2018 so he's been around for a little while in the DVD killer roster if you're about a DLC then you would also get Kate Denson the clown is a tall killer and has a movement speed of 115% or 4.6 meters per second which for his frame is remarkable he has a terror radius of 32 meters so all pretty standard so far he has perks and powers that are all about ending chases and closing loops quickly so let's take a look at his teachable first then we'll discuss his powers as always the clown has three teachable perks these three perks are bamboozle cholerophobia and pop goes the weasel so bamboozle is a chase perk that complements the clown's powers this perk is firstly going to increase your volt speed 5 10 or 15 percent faster but there is more to this perk because once you have vaulted a window the entity will block that vault location for 8 12 or 16 seconds now a few things to bear in mind is that only one vault location can be blocked at any time and the vault is only blocked for the survivors so you as a killer are free to go in and out as many times as you please Colrophobia is the next perk and a little bit of trivia for you here Colrophobia is actually the fear of clowns so for all you people out there that have a fear of clowns and this is the correct name for that term anyway this perk instills fears in any survivors within your terror radius if they're in there they have a 30 40 50 percent penalty to healing progression speed perfect in keeping those survivors busy whilst you are playing his final perk is called Pop Goes the Weasel, and man, I can talk about this perk all day. After you hook a survivor, the next generator you kick is damaged, and the damage will instantly regress the generator by 25% of its progress. After that, the generator will start regressing at its normal rate. But this is an extremely powerful perk that is usually used by most killers, and you're going to have seen it quite often. Pop is active for 35, 40, 45 seconds after the survivor is hooked. That was the clown's perk, so now let's talk about the clown's powers. As I explained at the beginning, the clown has just been reworked, so as well as some changes to the timings, the clown has been given an extra special ability to help you in the trial. We will be discussing this new special ability soon, but first let's start with his old power, and this is the afterpiece tonic. And when I say old power, I'm not giving you redundant news here, he still has that as well. So the afterpiece tonic is a tonic that smashes from your bottle and releases a purple gas cloud that will intoxicate any survivor that runs through it. Intoxicated survivors will suffer from impaired vision and also have the hindered status effect. This means that survivors will have a temporary movement speed reduction, which is usually around 15%. The survivors are also going to start coughing, which will linger for two seconds after they leave the gas cloud. Now, this tonic has been his party trick since his release and until the 9th of February 2021. This rework has seen the developers add another kind of bottle to his arsenal. This is called the Afterpiece Antidote. This bottle will firstly release a white gas cloud which after 2.5 seconds will turn yellow and this has the invigorating effect on anyone who is in contact with this cloud. The invigorated effect means that any player will gain 10% speed boost for 5 seconds if they run through that gas. The reason I said players is that this is not exclusive to just the killer as survivors can also gain a 10% speed boost too. If you are being trigger happy with your bottles then each tonic or antidote has a cancelling effect on the other. So say for example you throw yellow gas then you throw a purple one the gas clouds will counter each other. If a survivor runs through a yellow cloud but then the purple one then they will cancel each other out. But how do I change the bottles I want to throw, I hear you say? 
Well, you tap the ability button, that will ensure you switch bottle types and is visible in the bottom of the screen with this purple or yellow haze. Hold the ability button to reload the bottles as you only start with so many and these are mixed so you don't have say 3 purple, 3 yellow. The amount of the bottom, which is normally 4, is for both so try to be very efficient with your bottle use. A few stats for your powers because it's quite important you understand the timings to understand how to be more efficient with this killer. If you have a gas cloud lingering, this will linger for 10 seconds. However, a survivor moving through the gas cloud will cause it to dissipate more quickly after 0.4 seconds. Reloading takes 3 seconds as standard and this has been a much needed change from the old version. The bottle velocity is 8.5 meters per second, however charging it for 1 second more will increase this to 14 meters per second. To prepare a throw or to cancel a throw takes one second, so it might not seem like a lot, but prepare for that. If a survivor runs through the tonic, then their vision will be impaired for four seconds, although there's a gradual improvement through that time. Already mentioned the hindered status, that will be 2.5 seconds. You also lose the ability as a survivor to fast fault if you run through the gas, and that will last two seconds. The after peaks antidote will last five seconds and will grant 10% speed boost to anyone who runs through it. One final element that could come in handy to know is that hitting a survivor directly with a bottle will cancel any animation they are doing, such as repairing, unhooking, so get your best aim out when you want them to quickly interrupt the survivor doing something. That's pretty much all the information on the clown's powers, so let's take a look at how to use these powers effectively. Let's start by splitting the powers so we can look at the tonic first. Like I explained, this is to hinder and visually impair the survivors, so how do we utilise that best? Right, the clown is very much all about ending chases early, that is the crux of his power. He has the ability to reduce the survivor's running speed, meaning that you can get that knife in their spine quicker than some other killers. How we do this is by cutting off loops. I see killers just aimlessly throwing the bottles and hoping for the best, and we all sometimes fall in that category, but the best way to do it is to cut the path off that the survivor's going to take. So for example, if you see survivors in a certain area, then cut off their path so survivors in front of me, like in this instance here, then what I will do is cut off the right because I want the survivors to run into a dead zone instead of running into a strong loop. You are forcing the survivor's pattern, and the survivor must choose to either run through the tonic and have the slowdown, or run the opposite way. This will work well when you work out the loops and potential dead zones. What happens when you're already at the loop? Again, try to dictate the path you want the survivors to go to. If I'm at a TNL, then I will throw the tonic and then give the survivors a decision. You can either run towards me or run through the tonic. Either way, you should be able to, as a killer, close the gap significantly or get a hit because don't forget, for two seconds, they lose the ability to fast vault if they run through the tonic. I see killers playing around pallets and even with the hindered status, the survivors can still pull pallets down. So try to get through a pallet and then once the survivor is away from the pallet, then again, dictate which way you want the survivors to run. If you are new to the game, this is going to take a bit of time to get used to, but just remember that even slowing them down is still going to allow you to at least get them to drop that pallet, get it broken, rather than them constantly looping. I believe that the clown also has a lot of mind game potential that should be utilised when playing. The main one is the fact that holding the bottle ready to throw does not hinder your speeds. So your good survivors who will constantly check behind will see you holding the bottle, might try some erratic movement to make you waste these. This could give you an opportunity to either catch them quicker than you normally would or make them lose focus on the chase and make mistakes. So be prepared to mind game this and try to take advantage. The clown also has the ability to mind game at almost every opportunity. You will find when a survivor is hit with a tonic that they will sometimes panic and do things that are a bit irrational. I have forced shack pallets to be dropped due to panicking and basically survivors not being able to see. Again, Shack is a good one, survivor wins a certain way, try to cut off that optimal route with a quick throw of the tonic to force the hands. This might not work against all survivors, but certainly worth a try, and the same can be said at most loops. If they're going to drop a pallet, then try it. The fact a survivor can't see you for a short while will certainly help you in your quest for those kills. It goes without saying that you need to understand the aim and direction of the bottles, and also have a bit of understanding of predicting where the survivor's going to run. But this is going to help with chases. Wasting bottles will have a detrimental effect because without your bottles, you don't really have anything else going for you. Get used to the timings, get used to the range, and get used to the areas that you will utilise them most. Smashing the bottle in certain areas will either reduce your gas or increase your gas. 
Hitting high objects will cause the gas to come down over a bigger space and it's going to maximise your area that will affect the survivors. So try to learn about these little things in the game, usually hitting trees or hitting, like I'm showing you here on the game, high arches you will have a bigger spread of the gas. The one thing you must try to remember as clown is that you are playing a killer whose map pressure is not the best. Like I explained earlier, the rework has sort of tried to address this and given the clown some extra weapons in the form of his yellow bottles to increase his speed. My initial feeling about the bottles is to give me that extra 10% boost to go from generator to generator. Don't forget when you throw the yellow bottles, the gas will initially be white and that does nothing. You will only get the benefit of it once the yellow gas disperses. And like I said earlier, that's 2.5 seconds after the smash. What you don't want to do is misjudge your throw and then sit waiting for the yellow gas to appear. Because at this point, you'll have lost time and distance on any survivor. If you are using the yellow gas for chases, then this is the time to ensure the bottles smash behind the survivors so that they don't get the benefit. If they do get a benefit though, don't worry, it's not a big deal as long as you go through it too, as you'll both just have the same speeds as standard except your 10% extra. Survivors will struggle against a 10% extra speed boost, it's basically like two stacks of play with your food, so you will be fast. Please don't underestimate how important this will be when you are playing the game. You need to remember that whilst the clown is excellent at his chase game, what he has in his chase he loses in map pressure. This is something that hopefully you can fix with the yellow bottles, however please ensure that one of the main killer rules is followed, even more so with the clown. Don't over chase. If you are having trouble down the survivor, you can guarantee, unless you are playing four potatoes, that there will be them gen jockeys punishing you for your misadventures of a chase. The clown needs you more than ever to break chase. Get a pallet out of the way, break the chase, survivors take a different part of the map, then cut that chase instantly and live to fight another day. Another tip with the yellow bottle is that you can utilize your 10% speed when you hook a survivor. So if you get a survivor down, smash one of the bottles over them hopefully when you pick them up you'll have your 10 percent so that will help you in regards to getting them to that hook that little bit quicker it goes without saying that my final point is please keep checking your bottles you will be surprised especially if you're new when you finally have a survivor where you want them and bang you're out of bottles so keep checking this and this rework seeing the time for reload reduced from five to three seconds so it is a world of difference don't get caught up without bottles just any downtime, when do we ever get these as killers? I know that's probably what you're thinking, but any downtime, please reload. That is pretty much it for the tips in regards to how best to utilize the clown, but let's have a look at his add-ons now and what are their purposes. So first, the brown add-ons. We have the VHS pawn that will switch the colors of the tonic and the antidote, so messing with the survivor's mind a bit, where the yellow will hinder and the purple will give them the antidote. You can slightly decrease the cooldown between bottle throws using the robin feather, Want some extra blood points and really show off your aim, then use the party bottle. That will award you 100 blood points for a direct hit, but that's about it. Finkler's Parade Glove will change your arc as a throw. So out with the brown, in with the yellow. You can have decreased reload time with the thick cork stop. Sticky Soda Bottle is going to increase your bottles from 4 to 5. A bit of Solvent Jug add-on will increase the invigorated duration. The Kerosene Can will ensure intoxicated survivors suffer from the blindness effect for 30 seconds. And that is it for the yellow add-on, so let's move on to the Clown's green add-ons. The Sulfuric Acid will ensure that intoxicated survivors suffer from the mangle status. Spirit of Harton will increase your movement speed when reloading. Flask of Bleach will ensure that intoxicated survivors suffer from an extra 5% of the hindered status. Bottle of Chloroform will do two things. First, it's going to increase the tonic's gas spread velocity and expand the area of effect. So let's move on to the purple now. Garish's Makeup Kit will increase the invigorated duration. Ether 15% will increase the intoxicated duration. The Cigar Box will allow anyone invigorated to see the aura of all players within a 16 metre radius. So that includes you and the survivors. Cheap Gym Bottle will allow you to start with two extra bottles, so you're going to be carrying six bottles at a time instead of the standard four. Let's have a look at his iridescent add-on and see what they do. Tattoo's Middle Finger, this is going to allow you to see intoxicated survivors auras for six seconds. And the last one is Redhead's Pinky Finger. There is a lot of fun to be had with this, as any direct hit and a survivor with a bottle is going to lead them to suffer from the exposed status effect. So basically you smash a bottle on them and then you can down them straight after. 
So now we're going to look at the recommended perks for the clown. Which perks work effectively on him and will make him more effective? These are always very subjective, so if you don't agree, add your comments with what you think I've missed out on. Some players prefer to complement this chase game with more chase aiding perks and some try to make up for his lack of map pressure with slowdown perks. I will discuss these different perks now which will allow you to make a nice build out of it. As I do with all my guides I prefer to discuss the perks and let you choose the best perks for your playstyle. So let's take a look at the recommended perks this Chainsmoking Killer should have. So firstly we're going to look at Save the Best for Last. This perk is universally accepted as a good perk for the clown, especially with his powers. It is a chase perk but will allow you to build up some stacks to decrease your recovery after a hit. You can imagine if you also use a tonics to good effect having the ability to recover and continue for the second and crucial hit will make you quite a formidable killer. Just try to avoid your obsession and losing the stacks because once you are on 8 stacks you will be one deadly clown. Pop goes the weasel, it is such a strong perk. It is a clown teachable so you will have this straight away and not need to grind for it. Pop will regress the generators 25% after you hook a survivor and kick a gen. Really strong perk and could be extremely useful for a killer who is lacking with the map pressure to allow you to dishearten those survivors and prolong the game to help you get them. Brutal Strength is another excellent chase perk on the clown. In case you're not aware this is a trapper teachable. This is a perk that will allow you to kick and destroy pallets, breakable walls and damage generators 10, 15, 20% faster. Essential to help you break those loops, make more dead zones and end chases quicker to really pile up pressure on those survivors. Corrupt Intervention could be a useful perk to add if you are struggling putting the pressure on then add this perk to help you funnel the survivors towards you and start applying the pressure with hits and downs in the early game. At level 3 this perk will block up the 3 furthest gens for 2 minutes. This is going to help you get started and push the survivor towards you. Discordance can be an extremely helpful perk on the clown. Again, lack of map pressure could be an issue so this perk is going to inform you when survivors are stacking on gens. This will help you certainly in the early game if survivors jump on a gen straight away point in the right direction to go apply that pressure. Oppression is a newish perk that I have been enjoying on the clown. I can't state enough that map pressure could be an issue so why not let this perk do the hard work for you. This perk is a twins teachable and basically activates when you kick a generator. Three other random generators will also begin regressing. If there are survivors on that gen, they will receive a difficult skill check and naturally if they miss you're going to get a nice alert and also percentage gen will regress. Great for location, great for pressure. As always you've got more perks that could complement the clown and his playstyle so if you are thinking why have I not added ruin undying, barbecue or anything like that, by all means try it and see. These are just my opinions as the effective perks that have helped me and can certainly help you with your clown game. Hope that all makes sense guys and as always feel free to comment below, drop me a message in my discord server, let me know how you found this guide. The new and improved buffed clown has been out for a couple of days now so hopefully if you're having problems then this guide will send you on the right path. As always the game's going to be on next, hopefully show you some of the points in a live environment so I will switch over to the commentary now. Alright so the Sanctum of Wrath. I don't really like this map but needs must. Alright so I'm gonna smash the yellow bottle at some point. Try to time this right so I just walk into it. Oh spotted someone straight away. So this could be good I could get my 10% speed against this so I am gonna catch up pretty quickly and let's see what she does here. What are you doing? Oh, I've lost her. Oh, there we go. Well, that was strange. I don't understand why she waited there. Okay. Right. I'm going to commit to her. See if we can cut her off up here. Where you're at, where you're at. This just taking quite a while. But I'm going to get her down here, surely. Right. Go on, run back if you need to. Nope, I thought so. Right, get a hit there. This guy's got a flashlight, I'm sure of it. Let's see if we can scare him off a bit. Oh, I thought he stayed in there. Right. I'm going to reload because I want to get some speed. Yes, I know, I know David, right. I want to get some speed. Pick her up. Go quick, so I've got 10% speed there to get to the hook. David, piss off with that flashlight. 
Right, it cost me a gen, but never mind. I'm going to use pop on here. So the build I've got on here is pop, save the best for last, discard and pop, and yeah, sloppy butcher. I haven't got brutal strength on here since I've switched over. I can't get up been through millions and millions of points. Right, Claudette, I'll get a hit here. Not happy because she is my obsession, so I'm going to lose stacks. But if I can get a quick down, I don't mind. I've only got one stack at the minute. She makes us? Nope. Right. No stacks. Right, smash that on there. Pick her up. Oh, David with that flashlight. I think the fence was in the way there. That was unlucky. Um, I'm quite enjoying putting them on the hook with the extra 10 percent does come in handy especially if you look and the hooks are quite far away doing that helps right i know david's around here somewhere but i really need to oh hello david oh, he's just just healed as well all right i'm losing gens like there's no tomorrow here all right we'll commit to david all right jump down okay dead ad Yep, but I've been fat shamed. Right, getting picked up. Come here, David. Now, this is part of my clown guide, so one thing I will say is keep the yellow bottles are very easy to utilize and come in very handy, but you do go through them quite often. So, right, let's get that over there, get to here. No, I thought it might be someone up here. They have split the gens well, so I am in a bit of trouble. But since the update, the gens seem to be going really quickly. Ah, oh, he's just legged it down there. Right. I don't know if this is a Claudette or not. No, I think I've lost her. Should we double them back? No, she's ran off. Oh, it's Meg. Uh, Nia. Like a hit. Put some... Okay, that was strange. <laughs> I've lost her. Uh, what we're saying is since the update, I believe the skill checks are working a lot quicker now for people, a lot better, so great skill checks are coming in in clutch, making it a little bit tricky for us killers. Are they over here? We're back on this one. Uh, could be back on here. Yeah, right. See where she's gone or he's gone. Run right round. Hmm. The tracking's a bit shit today. I've touched the gen anyway, so kick that, and there they are over there. Now, normally, if I'm playing this to win, then I'd probably, I probably wouldn't bother with that far gen. But as I say, just having a nice chill game, just showing how the clown's powers work. Let's see if we can catch them. With this 10% speed, maybe we get at least a hit. I don't really want to dance around Shack at the minute, but I know there's two of them here. Right. I got caught on the thing there, yep. Yeah. Get the hit on Yui. Cut that off. Do you want to go in there? No, they've all ran off the other way. Right. Don't really want to be pulled too far away, David. Yeah, I'll see you. Get the hit and the waste of pallet. All right. Right. Let's commit to this guy. You know what? I haven't even kicked the pallet here yet, so he's got a. I might maybe be around that way. Right. So I've made his mind up for him. He's at the run the other way. I think he's panicked when he's seen the gas cloud. So right. Can we get a hit on here? He's got dead hard, remember? Push out in front of him. And down you go. I don't know who that was running opposite me, but let's get him hooked up. Getting some nice stacks now as well. I do recommend save the best for last on this guy. On this killer. Right. I can hopefully make this. I want to make this over here, then use pop on this. Gen. Right, on you go, David. Oh, he's dead. I didn't realise he's dead. 
He must have went on the second stage. These gens are so spread apart, I am going to have to use my bottles to try to whiz between them. Right. Are they up here? No. Are they on this far one? Let's go check. Got a bit of time. Hatch. That's noted. Right, someone's over here. Nope. Now I haven't got time to sit and look. I'll just have a quick browse maybe in here maybe. Nope. To really sit and look because the other gens are going to be done. And I think what they've done is they've split up because there's three of them. I think they're going to split on the gens. That upstairs gens being worked on. Let me just check this first. Right. Oh, Claudette. Switch over the gases there. Right, on that way. Do that. Pretend to break that. I'll get this here. Yeah. Alright. She's gone through it. Oh, she's coming my way. Claudette, that is bad movement. Oh, there's a friend there as well, Yui. Right. Alright. I'm trying to see if Yui's picked up. I think she had the toolbox in her hand, I thought she might have had a uh, flashlight. Alright, I'll move nice and quick over here. 10% speed for 5 seconds. Help me get a little bit further. Not that I needed it, but all time helps. Right, them two have doubled up on that gen. Right, use this, see if we can catch them with a little bit of boosted power. No, nope. they've gone. Let's have a look. I'm presuming. There we go. One there, right. Alright. Yui's gone for the rescue. I'm sure there's someone else there as well. Let's get the head there. Shout out where Claudette. Let me get Yui. Get some stacks. Right. Let's get the hit there. Oh, Claudette, you little bastard. Right. Should have waited that out. Obviously, she had borrowed time. Alright. Right. So, Claudette is a gamer. Borrowed time warrior. So. Get a climbing over, yep. I'm just going to leave her down. She's very likely got DS. She can stay on the floor. I've got no stacks now, so I'm pretty much running with three perks. Yui, that is. What the hell are you doing? Right. Oh, look, look at the sound of this. Uh, she makes us, does she make us? Uh, yeah. I'll chase. There's uh, Nia. Just seeing her in the top right there. So let's go for Yui. I know nobody's went on a gen, so someone's going to have to go pick Claudette up. Have the hit there, just in case she tries to trap back. And I am out of bottles, but I should get the hit here. Just want to make sure. No dead ad. Right. Oh, hello. Yeah, Mr. Skill check there. Claudette. Is it Claudette? Kick this. Wish Claudette would get out of my way. She's my uh, obsession. I'm not utilising this very well. Hit that. Get this. Do that again. Yeah. Go up here. Oh, Claudette. Right. If I hit there, I'll give up with save the best for last. Oh, alright, she's got the gen's uh, pallet straight away. I should get this here, which way is she going to go? Oh, she's vaulted, but down she goes. Right, I'm not sure if this is her last hook or not. But you, Claudette, go to the basement. It was a last hook, right, down to two. could look at the hook count on the side, but I'm not keeping track of the survivors. You pop on this. So I've got nine hooks according to that. Nine hooks. One, two, three, four. Uh, eight hooks. Right. Let's go over. I'm not working on this. Okay, there's Lisa running up there. Both of them are up there, right. Trying to 
Yui. Oh, she set off a firecracker. I think this could be the end for Yui. How? I get this. Yeah, down she goes. Now this could be her last hook. I know where the trapdoor is. Right, on you go, Yui. Right, let's get some speed to get this trapdoor. Oh, hit the crow. Right. I'll go over a close the trapdoor, but I'm not really bothered if they escape or not. But I am going to utilise the yellow just to show you how to traverse across the map. Unfortunately, as I say, the map, uh, the clown does lose a bit of map pressure, but these yellow bottles certainly do help a bit. So let's try it. Let's have a look. So we we'll hit that there. Walk through the gas, and I'm going to get a ten percent speed. No survivor here, and it's just a case of getting used to switching the bottles. You'll have seen maybe a couple of times on that game I've accidentally hit the wrong bottles. Use the time to utilise to reload and Nia escapes all right so gg guys hope you enjoyed the guide guys if you did please give it a quick like drop me a quick comment let me know if it's worked for you or not and if you haven't already done so but you do enjoy my content please feel free to press that subscribe button click the notification bell and you will be updated when i release any more new videos all right thanks guys